Morning folks. Monday morning, hope you're well. I'm in the middle of smoking my Kaviki. It's a beautiful, I think you'd call this a shield or an elephant's foot. Nice cross grain there and bird's eye across the front panel and the rear panel and uh, a nice wood and sterling silver adornments. And I'm coming towards the end of a bowl of McClellan's number 27. Now I'm coming to the end of the tin as well. Going through that pretty fast. We've had a pretty warm couple of days. Saturday was warm, yesterday was very warm. Today's supposed to be even warmer. It's not up there yet. It's around 11.30. Cheers. So, currently working on a commissioned tadpole. Which is coming along nicely. And hopefully have that finished today, at some point. And, um, and once again, that same salmon black ebonite stem material and it really really each time I use it I'm, I'm, I just fall in love with it once again um, I'm yet to make myself a pipe with this material I do need to do that and I'll be perfectly honest with you uh, I've been close to smoking this a couple of times now not only the amazing grain on it but that stem just is calling to me it's the same material but just the way it came out the shape of it the bend on it everything on it just turned up beautiful so I'm really really tempted as I am with most of my pipes but that one's still available truth be told when I put that up together with the panel pipe it was actually the panel pipe I was hoping that wouldn't sell but that sold straight away if that wouldn't have sold straight away, I think I would have been quicker to smoke this one. I can't quite afford that one. It's a five star. But we'll see. You never know. Um, I'm in the process of putting together a pipe, set pipe and tobacco sale. This is probably going to be the last one from that consignment that I got. It's almost a year that I've had it now. Not quite. Maybe I had it. I think the first sale, first batch, was around October time, possibly. Or maybe it was around June time. I can't remember. It's not far off from a year, anyway, that I've had it. And we've done three or four sales from that consignment. And comparing to what we started off with, done pretty well, sold most of it, but there's still a fair bit left. So I think uh, the next batch is gonna be the last batch, and then it goes back to the owner, where it was left. And there are still some really, really, really nice pipes in there and some good tobacco, aged tobacco. So watch out for that, it'll be in the next few days. This pipe is one of those pipes that makes everything that you smoke a lot richer.
if you've got a tobacco that is a little bit too mild for you, you want a little bit more oomph, a little bit more kick, you smoke it in this pipe and it just will do that. It's interesting how it does that. The, the number 27 that I smoke in another pipe will be totally different. In this pipe, it's very robust. It's a bit of a hard edge on it. Stanwell update. I've got another Stanwell in. So this one is another pipe of the year 2001. This is my one that I got recently, and uh, which I've been smoking and enjoying. Still going through the, the break-in process. And there's brand new 2001, whoops, pipe of the year. Got some really nice tight ring grain. I'm on the uh, FaceTime camera, so I don't know if it will show up, but it's really nice tight ring grain on that. And it's actually got, where well, I noticed, a very slight sort of, um, you know, sometimes when you have a dark brown uh, stain and you just polish it and polish it and polish it, you get some highlights, like almost maroon or purple highlights. This one has that. It's very, it's a very Danish kind of finish. I find. I really like that. I do that on my pipe sometimes. Um, but um, it's a very nice example. Really, really nice. So, no doubt that will be going up for sale at some point. It goes very well. I might even sell them as a, t as a pair. I've got also, um, which I showed recently, um, also 2001, but this one is the Xmas pipe. So look at the box. That one says Pipe of the Year 2001, and that one says Xmas. So you have seen this one. This one is awesome. I love this one. Look at that ring grain. Beautiful. Beautiful sandblast. Really, really nice sandblast. But I like the silver on this one. You got a triangular shank, and that's capped in sterling silver. And you've got silver on the stem as well. I really like that. Gives it a nice feel of luxury. They all come with, uh, I think they do. Uh, this one. Well, the, the Pipe of the Year one comes with an adapter. I can provide an adapter anyway, if somebody wants to buy it. by Stanwell and the other one I can provide the adapter. My, my adapters are kind of customized um, a little bit so they're a little bit better. They'll take a pipe cleaner a lot better. The draw will be a lot smoother but uh, still the Stanwell one is just fine. And um, I still have the Borup which is a bit similar to, two, to the 2001 kind of design. It's a bit of an apple Kind of thing, very Danish looking thing. Unbelievable craggy sandblast on this one, just unbelievable. And uh, this one I can't quite bring myself to sell so far. This is the last type of batch that I bought a while ago. Um, I had a couple of the Borups, I let one of them go, and this one I held on to. I don't know, maybe if I get an offer I can't refuse, maybe I'll sell it. I don't know. Um, it's just one that I haven't yet been able to let go. And this one you've seen as well. So these are the last four of my sort of special edition Stanwells that I've got. This is a classic billiard sandblasted billiard. Again, a tight ring grain. 
and this is a limited edition 75th anniversary. Only 150 of them made. Um, so this is a limited edition, very limited. And it comes with its own padded leather case. So those are the four I've got. Um, I haven't really done a, a formal sale of these, but um, this one also has an adapter. You had it the wrong way. There we go. Anyway, so those are the four standards I've got right now. Besides for the ones that I'm currently smoking, which is the, the 2001 that I have and the 2002 um, back of the year. And um, it reminds me a bit of, of one of the watch channels that I watch, um, where the guy, whenever he's, he tries to sort of build a collection for himself, but he's selling watches the whole time and he does videos on YouTube. and. Um, Anybody that comes into his store, he like if he wants to try and build a collection for himself, he doesn't wear the watch. Because if he wears the watch, people come in the store and say, how much is that watch? And if somebody wants to buy a watch, he just can't refuse it. That's what he's in business for. And I kind of feel the same sometimes about my own pipes as well. And a lot of times I end up selling pipes for my own collection in that way. Somebody says, would you sell that? And they make me an offer and we come to a deal. And um, so... Although this um, particular Stanwell, I, lo I looked for this for a long time, about four years to find this. Um, I guess if I had the right offer, I'd probably let it go as well. But um, this was the pipe which started my love affair with Stan Stanwell Limited Edition Pipes. Um, I bought one of these new old stock, I think it was on the Danish Pipe Shop. It must have been about five or six years ago. I fell in love with the shape, just that subtle... S curve that you've got here. It is a billiard. I mean, it's it's a slightly bent billiard, but the 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 fact that the shank goes down lower than the bowl and then comes back up that subtle S. It was something about it and the silver work, of course. You know, generous amounts of silver there. Um, I just fell in love with it, and then from then on, I was kind of on the hunt for limited edition for the special for the pipe Stanwell pipe of the year pipes. I know people have got every single year going back. 30, 40 years. Um, I've never really tried to do that, although I've helped customers complete their, co their collections. I've got some customers who have bought maybe 20 Pipe of the Years from me over the years. Um, I've probably had going through my hands, I don't know, maybe a hundred, maybe more Pipes of the Year uh, from Stanwell, but somehow I never end up keeping them um, for that reason, because um, I'm in it for, uh, at the end of the day, I sell pipes. As much as I do like to collect pipes, I also sell them. I mean, I was a collector before a pipe maker. And I've got to the point, not, not with every single pipe, but with most of my pipes that I've had and maybe sold, I've got to the point where I can, even though I don't have the pipe anymore and I might kind of fancy having it back again. And there are a few uh, from my pipe collection that I've had and wanted back, um, such as the 2002, which I ended up finding. Um, but I, I've, come, I've come to a point where I can enjoy sort of the memory and the experiences that I had with the pipes. And I'm not terribly upset if I don't have it now. Um, and that's kind of how I look at it. You know, when I have the pipes, I smoke them, I enjoy them. If I sell it, that's fine. I get the benefit of selling it. And I've had the benefit of having spent some time with that pipe. And um, and I'm, I'm kind of quite satisfied with enjoying my time with the next pipe, you know, and, and it just kind of continues on and on and on. Um, I don't need to have a collection of hundreds and hundreds of pipes. I'm not that kind of collector. 
some might argue I'm not even a collector. Um, but I, there are a few core pipes, you know. But again, would I say never? I don't know. I mean, even even my my rosebud, which was my prototype, so my first rosebud, it's probably the pipe that gets smoked the most. Um, would I ever part with it? Everything has a value, you know. I'm not that sentimental. That uh, what I would kind of have a, an issue with is having to break in another pipe possibly you know when you smoke a pipe and it works and it gives you a good smoke when every single time you smoke it that's what I miss more than the actual shape of the pipe or the look of the pipe you know it's it's more the fact that I know that I can rely on that pipe um, pipes which I've bought recently and I'm breaking in I'll smoke them every so often but the ones that I reach for on a daily basis are a very, very small group of pipes. Very, very small group of pipes. Um, the, the Peterson is becoming one of those, um, but it's still not quite there yet, but it's it's fast becoming one of those. Um, and this one actually does attach a memory. I mean, you've all heard this story about this pipe. If you haven't, go back to my videos. It's a bit of a, a story. Um, but it, they're quite few and far between, like the ones that I smoke regularly. And this is one of them, but even that doesn't get smoked as much as the, the rosebud. This one, again, not as much as the ro as the rosebud. Um, of course, the six two six. I have been off. I've been off the the, the aromatics recently. Um, if I was smoking the aromatics, then then the Peterson Dracula would definitely be one of those small group of pipes that I smoke all the time. And of course my uh, my shotgun egg. And in terms of uh, Latakia pipes, it would be these two more than any others. It would be the Fabrizio Natalizia, the uh, burnt apple, which I commissioned years ago, and my Boswell burnt apple. Those are my two go-to Latakia pipes. But I, I mean, I don't really smoke Latakia as much either. I'm really, really you know, codgering out these days on a very, very small, there I am again with a very, very, but a very small group of pipes. And my development of that small group, in other words, maybe adding one or two here or there takes a long time because as I say, as I keep saying, when I pick up a pipe to smoke, I want to enjoy it. I don't really smoke that many bowls of tobacco that I could say, let's say I smoked five bowls a day, I can invest one of those in breaking in a pipe. So at least I'm getting four reliable smokes. I don't, I only smoke one, maybe two bowls a day, if that. Um, so I don't really wanna waste that one bowl on breaking in a pipe. So my pipes that join my group take a long time for, take a long time to group, to join that group, that small group, because it takes a long time for me to break in a pipe. Um, and the only time, maybe there are some exceptions, that I'll break in a pipe quicker if, if I'm absolutely besotted with the pipe from a design point of view and it smokes very well from the off. That's the only exception. If a pipe smokes great from the off, then it's in there. You know, uh, there's a very short breaking period, then, you know, it's going to join the little group very quickly. Otherwise, they take time. This one I've had now for a good long time and uh, it's still, you know, although I bought it as an estate pipe, but still I, I need to sort of break it into what I smoke you know somebody might have smoked birdies in that and maybe that's why I get a robust kind of experience each time and slowly it'll probably temper down to all the golden sliced or McCle McClellan Virginias you know and that takes time but to give an example about stuff that takes me time I bought this pipe um, I don't know it's been sitting on one of my pipe pegs you know I've got um, pegs up here for the pipes that I'm working on you see them with all pipe makers you know that they have them on their table the little pegs um, Wrong one. Um, and this has been hanging on one of the pegs for a long time. This is a Peterson in Newgrange. I have I have I've yet to smoke it. This is a look at that grain. I mean, it's amazing. The Newgrange pipes have got really really good grain. This is a a nine mil spigot, and um, I have yet to smoke it. It's in very very nice condition. You know, and that's why a lot of my pipes sometimes end up for sale because I've never got around to smoking them and I'm thinking they're just sitting there. At least, you know, make some money from it. And that's 
basically what happens a lot of times. This one, awesome, awesome ring grain, lovely sandblast. You can see the straight grain lines going, or flame grain at least. Um, it's just a great pipe. But I've yet to smoke it. There's my torch. I don't know how many of these kind of torches I go through with the LEDs. They never last. They're a bit like lighters. They work well for a while and then they start to dim. Even with new batteries. If somebody's on the hunt for one of these, you know, they've been trying to get a good grain, good ring grain, a, a new grain pipe, and you're desperate for it, contact me. I bought this for myself, but I've never smoked it. And uh, it's an estate pipe. It has been smoked before, but it's in very nice condition. So if somebody's interested, I would let it go. But um, anyway. It's just, I'm just trying to, the point I was trying to make is that it takes a long time for a pipe to, to join my sort of very small um, rotation of pipes. I do have pipes which really should be in my regular rotation, uh, but sometimes they just don't give me the style. Oh, I found another, another one. It's a bit um, dusty, but another Steinwell pipe over here. I'm sitting in my drawer. Um, I forgot about that one. Somebody actually, one of my customers that I bought a lot, that I supplied a lot of Stanwell pipes for, they actually, when they bought a batch of, I don't know, seven or eight pipes in one go, they said, choose one for yourself, which was amazingly generous. And I chose that. Um, but I haven't, don't really smoke it very much. I ought to. What am I trying to show you here? I mean, just to give an example, so this is what this is one of my pipes, uh, an apple. It smokes very well, um, but you know they kind of go in and out of favour. Um, but I actually, this is a Northwoods pipe for the most part. I smoke Northwoods in that, and it smokes it fantastically well. Um, but I'm smoking the Fabli the Natalizia pipe, and like I showed you, and the Boswell pipe. So it's not because there's anything wrong with that pipe. It's just that they just go in and out of favour in terms of what I'm smoking. On a regular basis, I'm trying to find the shape 55 Boya Blues pipe. It is here somewhere. How many of you guys remember that the XL Parker pipe that I bought a while ago? Gorgeous pipe. I haven't smoked it in Yonks. Um, this one, Parker pipe with an amazing ring grain. Again, it used to be a go-to pipe, hardly smoke it now. But I wouldn't really want to sell that. You know, it's, it's a, a great pipe. This um, RC Sands pipe, which was just uh, quirky, this sort of shape here was a bit, the way that uh, shank flares out underneath. It's, it's actually almost, if it would have a chin, that would be a classic ship 55. It's got that right angle there. Um, RC Sands, I think, he may have passed away, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, but I might be wrong. Either that or he's retired, and I think his son possibly now does the pipes. Might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't actually plan on doing this video, but it just seems to have turned into a, a chat about my pipes. So I hope you don't mind. And I'm trying to find that pipe. This uh, beautiful Savonelli Ghibli. I've never broken it in. I've smoked. I've smoked it literally two or three times. It's, you can still see the briar. In, I mean, you can't in there, but there, you can still see the briar there. Beautiful part. I've just never got to break it in. What else? Sometimes you just don't get a chance to break in all the pipes. Stello, again, beautiful pipe. This one also gives me a very rich smoke. I do smoke it, but it's not in my regular, it's not in my regular rotation. It's the only sandblast LCS pipe that I have. I sold all the other sandblasted ones that I've ever done. Um, they were sandblasted for me by, um, um, Paul Hubbard 
but he no longer does pipes. Um, my Jason Mouton billiard, or Levat, I guess, which virtually unsmoked. It's had maybe a couple of bolts through it. I've yet to break it in, which is a bit silly. I've had that for probably a couple of years now. It's beautiful Savinelli. This I've smoked a lot. It's a Savinelli autograph. Amazing ring grain. Um, bought that on eBay in the state pipe a few years back. Got a very, very neutral flavor. I can smoke anything in there and it will be smooth. Doesn't give and doesn't take from the, from the flavor of your tobacco. Doesn't add and doesn't take away. Got a couple of uh, Tom Phillips pipes, a bulldog, and uh, this larger sort of Dublin freehand. Again, good smoking pipes, but I just haven't really done much with them recently. I used to smoke the bulldog a lot more, and there's really no reason why I shouldn't smoke it more. Perhaps I'll bring it out. Oh, here it is, it's buried underneath. Finally, that's the. Radice 2019 Pipe of the Year from Briar Blues, Mike. And again, also a very neutral smoking pipe. It doesn't add and doesn't take away from a smoke. Um, that should really be a little bit more in my rotation. It, it, I think this one I could say is maybe not completely broken in, but it's getting very close to it. It's a good pipe, a really good pipe. All right, I could go on forever. Um, some of you will be saying, oh, stop showing off your pipes. And some of you were saying, no, show me more, show me more. So I hope I've given you a good taste. I do this every so often. This was off the cuff. I had not planned it. Um, so I hope that was of interest. Like I say, hopefully finish off the tadpole today. And um, maybe get to start filming the pipe sale, pipe and tobacco sale, which the next pipe sale, which should be in the next, say, week or so. Um, so watch this space. All right, I've gone for nearly half an hour now, so if you're still here, thank you for still for sticking with it. Wish you all a wonderful week. I've got a pretty busy week. I've got two weddings that I'm going to. My cousin is marrying off a daughter, so I'm going to that. And today I'm going to a, a friend's daughter's wedding. Um, so both of them I'm going as a guest, which is nice. I haven't done that in a while. I'm usually going there um, working, but uh, not anymore. So... I'm looking forward to just chilling out. So I wish you all well. Have a great week. Good luck, England, tomorrow. You better pull your socks up, boys, because the last couple of performances, pretty dire. So pull your socks up, and let's have some decent performances. Catch you on the next one.